society one of the three or four leaders that we've got here today. Okay, thanks Richard. Um, today I'm, I'm going to cover from um, fuel, um, describing bars, um, some samples of chains um, from Steele to Oregon, um, bad chains so we can identify them that we shouldn't be sharpening them this way, we should be sharpening them the correct way. I've got a grinder here that I've made up that we dress our bars with. Um, correct quick fuels of um, chainsaws. Um, I'll start off now with with a little little thing that I've got on, on how to identify um, two-stroke fuel. Um, can anyone tell me how we could identify two-stroke fuel? Right. Okay, green. Okay. It could be any colour. It all depends on what sort of oils we've got. Um, we can go by having a bit of oil. Well, that's exactly right. Instead of drink bottles. <laughs> what we can do too, if we're not sure if there's any oil in it, we can add it with a bit of water. We put a bit of water in here. We'll give this one a shake. We can see very quickly this one is clearing a lot quicker than the one with the oil in it. And if we leave it for a fair while, we should get two layers, uh, three layers instead of, and this one here will just be just just ordinary two layers. So that's a, a fairly simple way. If you're unsure, you say, "Have I put oil in that, or haven't I?" Just a little bit of water. So I need to a tin or anything, just throw it in and you can see if it will go, and that will stop cloudy for ages. Just the detergents and the oil will um, keep it like that way. This one's pretty near clear. There's one little way we can do it. Um, plus our mixtures, we have to be very careful on different mixtures. Um, mostly they run 25 to 1 and 50 to 1. Um, I have discovered at 50 to 1 in the dead of summer, if you use a 50 to 1 in 40 degree heat, your soil will get very hot. Um, so you have to be aware of that. Um, not a bad idea to use 25 to 1 if it's really hot. And you must use an air cool oil in the chainsaw if it's an air cool motor. If you use a water cooled oil, you can strike a problem in carbon seeds. They will carbon up and you this is a piston if anyone is not aware of how to it's a two straight motor. Um, the ring seized between the piston through using um, water cooled oil. So just because we've got the boat fuel left over, we don't throw it into the chainsaw oil because we can have a seize. Um, by running no, no oil in it. Um, if you like, Gary, you want to pass it on? Um, if you don't run any oil in it, you forget. I've got a piston here that I'll hand around as you can have a look. It's completely seized. So you're not running. You can get up like that. By just having this all filthy dirty and not not maintaining it, you can get seized by just being running hot. So how the, the one side on this piston here is just being running hot. So that's through all the fins around your saw, not completely clean. So when I talk maintenance a bit later on about the saw, it'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about by having the saw perfectly clean, otherwise I run hot. Okay, same with our 
still with the fuel and that good spark plugs. Um, you can tell if it's running hot. Um, if it's running hot, your spark plugs can be definitely white. I've got a spark plug there on one side of it, it's white. Um, that's come out of that piston that's going around there that's um, been seized up. Um, that's uh, made it. So basically you can, if you're quick enough and you think your saw is getting hot and you work the plug out and have a look, it might save you some money. Um, you can pass that one Please don't sort of touch the too much because I won't be able to keep the... This one here is a, a grey brown. That's um, about a perfect colour for a saw that should be running. Um, if you if you start to have them real black, it's um, running a bit rich. Um, it, it can be the wrong fuel. You can be too strong, or you can uh, you saw needs tuning. So. Um, there's one there that's clogged up and it would be running real good with this um, colour plate. So when you to get it real hot, you need to have the head plugged up for the sawdust or no oil. Yeah, yeah. So, no, so no, they're no, an end of the motor, so all the pins around the chainsaw, um, they're supposed to be the colour they designed, they painted and everything, and that. That, that metal on them keeps them cool. Yep. So if you start to get oil in that on them, it, it won't work. So we have to have it perfectly clean. Um, and if you run the wrong fuel in it, they can run not hot as well. So yeah, um, the fins are actually a area to take the coolness in. Yeah. The more fins you got, the more area for air to go around and cool. Yeah, yeah and, and if they've blocked up and, and they've got a film of oil on them, they don't... So they, they can't release the heat. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that's... It. I've got another plug here that's not too bad, but it's, it, it is a very brown. Um, the, probably the saw would be running not too bad, but if you can get your saw to run with that light grey coloured um, colour on that plug there, you'll find that it'll be, be performing quite well for you. But this, this plug here is not too bad, and you can probably get away with that, and a lot of people wouldn't even know the difference with that plug there. It would be, be very close. But um, if you've got it white, or you, if you've got it that real, real black, you saw it would be running very rich, or very hot. So, have we got any more questions on, we've got any questions on that at all, about the slugs or pistons? Well, they're on the side of the thing, it's rich, It's been a bit lean, yes. Um, That'll go into tuning, that won't it? Yeah, yeah, well, um, a lot of people, I don't, don't like to teach a lot of people on how to tune, I, because I think it's a technique on its own. A lot of people will not be able to tune at all. And a lot of people should not, they should have a tape over that piece of fruit. Because, um, you know, it's a fine, if you, if you have them too lean, you can Burn get the same out. results. If, um, if you have it the other way, you're getting no results and it's not cutting properly. So, you know, um, when, when I teach with the tuning part of it, um, I, I rather recommend that they don't touch it. Um, I'll tell them the basics. So if it was really like um, running too quick with your chain, I would just recommend that they, they use your idle screw, screw and just just back it off a little bit so it's not the chain's not spinning. And um, if it's not responding, you could probably use your low idle screw. But I I, I don't like too many people. That's only my opinion, but I think yeah, people start playing around with saws that don't know Second what they're that doing. One. They, can, they can have more problems than what it's worth.
Exactly right. Yes. Yeah. Some people can get it very close, but you are right. If you use the tacos, it is probably the best way. Well, for a few hundred extra reps, you've got to do one thing blow a bloody saw, which I'm a big saw on the last Yeah. So that's why I don't recommend too many people finding it. Right, Jordan. Yes, he's just burning the water. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that's why I think some of these aids, if, if you can purchase them and, and when you're doing your lessons, it's very handy to be able to show people then and instead of just telling them if they see it, it might, might help them. So you probably know to get them from the local repair. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's where I got mine from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they can pull it out of the Yeah, yeah. So I'm probably a bit lucky because I'm, I'm friends with our local dealer, so I can just go in and do what I want. Or we keep supporting them by looking for the thing. So it's um, very handy to know, you know, if you've got, got your deal, local dealers and you want to collect a bit of stuff, just go around and, and mostly they'll keep them for you. So, um, you know, old chains or bars or. Instead of just sort of going by the book and putting overheads and that up, I, I think, you know, if we, if we go like something like this, people it's better can... better for people to see things yeah. like that because yeah. it's actually happened. Yeah, and understand it better than just looking at it on a bit of paper or something. Yeah. Rain, heat by rain, satisfied by rain, the paper by the pipes. Yeah. The paper, and that's pretty good okay. mm -hmm. So you put the same one back in. Yeah. yeah. Not the same shape. <laughs> same weight <laughs> <hate range. laughs> Yeah, the correct one the correct one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, okay. well, now that's made pretty easy with still because they've got just about exactly the same plate for, I think, the whole range. Now, yeah. So what fits a, a 2.6 fits, a, fits an 8.6. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They can keep, you know, Okay, um, going to our um, maintenance on it, um, I put it in two categories. I put it in a daily maintenance and a weekly maintenance. Um, I call the daily maintenance as basically just taking your bar off, clean, cleaning the groove in the bar. Um, cleaning around the sprocket, um, just checking your bar, making sure it's um, not worn, got grip and that on it. Um, oil holes and put them back and sharpen. Just basically light clean, the air cleaner. But a weekly, ma weekly maintenance, um, especially if you're using your saw, not like SES, you might use it for one day. We we'll, we'll probably would we'll say a six monthly. All depends on how much work you're doing. Um, completely pull it down and give it a good clean. Take every cover off as possible. Um, this one I probably won't pull it all down today because this, this saw here is a little bit harder to pull the covers off it, so I, I won't mess around pulling it all down. But um, we, we go right down to our rope start. Um, I'll just take various components off and we'll just talk about it on the way through as I'm putting it back. So uh, I'll just take the bar on that off. Main thing if you're teaching your students now, I find a good thing is um, try to keep the conveyor in little piles so they know where it goes back. So you know, like this cover here. They should get, they get, go together. Um, instead of just throwing them all together and saying, oh, these screws, I'm not sure if these are the long ones or the short ones. So, um, so we, would, we would take it off, we'd just give it a bit of a clean. You've got, got your, um, this here, it's for your depth gauge, plus it's got a little, um, Spike on the end of it, start from the nose and run it through. But I'll, I'll cover most of this when I'm putting it back together. Um, and you just, for the daily maintenance, you just have a quick look at the sprocket. If it's okay, you just give it a bit of a clean, put it back on. You always hold your bar. Why are you using it for clean fluid or mm -hmm. um, brush? I use a steam cleaner, but, but, but I, I've got the means of doing it. Um, an air hose is probably the, the best if you've got one. Um, if not, you can use a bit of petrol and that, but I prefer to keep the petrol alive. I can just wipe it down with a rag and a paintbrush or a good solid brush, I think is as good as any. Air hose naturally is better. 
Um, and so I'll go into the um, complete strip the whole sort here. And as I'm coming back, I'll, I'll talk about the various components. All saws are a little bit different, so um, you know, not every one of them. Probably the steels are probably a bit more simpler than some of the others to uh, pull down, but you know, there's not much in the difference of most of them. Mm -hmm. But most of the steels now have the star yes, screws. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm. I've got a good long handle on here that was um, quite good to use. If you, use, they do come out with a, like a little Allen key effect, but. Um, they are very um, slow and pretty to use, they're all right just for a spare in, in your kit, but um, these are quite good because you can, you can use them a lot easier. I've got ones that go in my socket. Yeah. You're probably not going to carry your socket sets around. Oh yeah, I've got yeah. the one, one small socket oh, and yeah. on it. So you can use them in your battery room. Sorry? So you should use them in your battery room. Yeah. Only in the reverse strip as well. Okay, so while we've got this off, um, I'll put them back as I go so we can, well, I'll just talk and I'll pull the next parts off. Um, here, we can um, show them when we're taking it off. I just took a bit of pressure off there now. So, um, there is simple ways, probably most of you do know on how to, to fix the recoil. Okay, so, you know, if something like this happens or as you got it off, um, well I found the other day with my saw, and I'm generally fairly particular, and I pulled mine off and give it a clean. Um, I just discovered right there near the pulley, it was fried. Okay, so while it's off, we're, we're doing, not only cleaning it, we're having a look at this as well, as well. And if you want to put a new rope on it, I've just taken the tension off this now. All you do is just take it off, cut the end, pull the end out of it and just push another one through and put your knot in it. And some of them have got a little notch. This one hasn't because it's it's got plenty of a gap, but some of them got a little notch in them that you can put your rope in to, to wind them up. So <coughs> all we do is just, um, after we put our rope on, about a metre, metre is not a bad length of rope to, um, to use, because if you have them too short, you're putting too much pressure on the spring. So all we can do is just wind it up like this. I've just taken it to the end, just wound it up, Put her in, that's it. Don't have to undo the spring and lose all the spring, the tension and everything else. So um, everyone understand how to do that? What's the main cause of those jamming? The, the frequently they, they will come out with the actual thing. There's something inside that can cause it so it will spring back if you need it. Back. Sometimes the two little prongs is, you know, on the clutch part get jammed up. I think oh, yeah, on the clutches. Yeah. Oh, on the there's another one there. On the there's some, on the, sometimes yeah. they're on there and sometimes they're on there. Yeah, just they, that little tongue there that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on that side. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they get a bit of junk under them and they yeah. sink one way or the other. Yeah. They don't spring back. Um, you sometimes. can have, if you put too much rope on them, you can have problems too, especially if they've got the. The full cowling. Uh, if you've got too much rope, yes. if it's yeah. over full, it can it can jam. It's so you know it's just you fill it up, but you don't over fill it, and you can use the wrong rope. Um, this one here for the big bit bigger saw, you've got the thicker rope. So just be careful on what if you put the thicker rope on this pulley here, you can have the same thing. You can so you have to be aware on what size rope to put on it as well. Some of them. Uh, they tie off with a knot, and the other ones in the husking put a loop around the shaft, and, and so the knot packed in close to the. Yes, yeah, yeah, they loop over. Yeah. If you can't get too far, the, the, the uh, motor it will start to chew the knot off, and you have to redo the whole thing. Yeah. And a little brass grommet thing where it comes down, and some knot wears down, and you get the yeah. rope catches on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if we all understand. 
yeah, well, you know, we give all this a clean, plus we, we, um, if you could take these covers off, we would. Well, we could take this one off, no problem. But um, we give that all a good clean. If, if I was doing a, a complete maintenance, I'd strip the whole lot down, um, all the components, put it in the steam, put it on the steam cleaner or whatever you've got, um, air. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when, we, when we finish this list for the day, as we, now we've got this pulled down a bit, if the saws are any dirtier than this saw that we have inspected before we go out, we're going to be cleaning them before we leave, before we go out to the work. So, <laughs> if they should be perfectly clean, otherwise you'll overheat them, and I honestly think that you should be teaching cleanliness of the saw, not Oh, she should be right, we'll throw her in the truck. Um, that's where we do have problems. Um, so the important thing is that the, the saw should be clean and ready to go and get in tip-top condition before you stick it back on the truck. Because then the next place you probably won't be you to get the next bit of it. Yeah, well, if it's, if it's nice and clean and, and, and right to go, um, if anyone should be able to use the saw. But if you've um, put it back in there and it's not sharp and not clean, and um, you might be having a person that goes out that's not over familiarised with a lot of sharpening, can get himself in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Plus half an hour wasted cleaning it. That's exactly yeah. right. So, and sharpening mm -hmm. it. Or well, worse, take a monster the bloody chain and somebody can be spending, you know, an hour and a half with a bit of remedial sharpening to yeah. fix the monster. Yeah. 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 So um, it's very important when we are teaching or um, if we do learn the correct way and, and, and make it of it, um, it can lead to a lot of um, problems otherwise. These you have to be very careful, you can't put a lot of pressure on these because it's only going into plastic and that's uh, the, the dirt with a lot of the ignition systems can play a fairly good problem with it, with it not starting and as it's revving out it'll cut out, aren't they? Too? Yeah. Because the dirt will make the contact between the two poles and switch it off. We've had to our air filter. I can demonstrate that with my sort of work, didn't you? But you've got to clean it before you tell you what. Our air our air cleaners, a lot of people use um, air to blow out our air cleaners. Um, we shouldn't be. Because there is an odd one around that you can, but most of these ones with the fibres on them, if you hit them with an air compressor, you damage all the fibres on them. And um, that pushes the dirt on the inside. So um, you really ruined them. These ones just split apart here somewhere and it's got a little dewy dig. Split apart. What I find is not a bad bad thing to do is just put a bit of petrol, a bit of mixed petrol. Um, if they're really dirty, it doesn't even hurt a bit of straight petrol first. Give them a good rinse out. Um, then do away with the petrol and then put a bit of mix, mix back in it. By putting them in something, instead of just pouring it through like that, you don't really do any good. If you can put it in a container that you can give it a good shake around, you'll find that it cleans them a lot better than what it does just by just trying to pour a bit around. You're going to pour it on the from the yeah, inside. Yeah, from the inside out. Inside out yeah. Because it, it doesn't really do any good. And, and I think I'd be aware on some of them you're not supposed to put any um, petrol with any of them. Some have got the cardboard um, cleaner on them. So you just, just be aware when you are doing it that you are treating the right right cleaner the correct way. Is it bad to, uh, uh, well you're talking about uh, pouring uh, fuel through it. Um, someone taught me that you should um, never have wet fuel on the uh, inside of the uh, filter, is that correct? Um, these, these ones, um, you really have to clean them right out, otherwise if you don't, 
you um, if you um, just do the outside, you're going to push it in. So you have to do it from the inside out anyway. Yeah. And if you split it and, and throw it with soap and, and get rid of all the gunk out of it, if you don't, you're going to leave particles in there and you will cause problems. Some people use brushes, which doesn't do anything. No, no, no. You can no. Pull the off wash, wash it out in petrol is the best way. Yeah, A tin, wash it around. Um, A little bit of mixture. Just keeps it keeps uh, a little bit of a little bit of oil there, just enough to stop. If your filter is a little bit thin, um, I've got a filter here, matter of fact, that I can pass around. You can have a look at that's completely cactus, and a bloke said there was nothing wrong with it. So, you know, that's the type of thing by blowing out with air hose that what can happen. Uh, yeah. Well, read the manual; it'll tell you what oh, you can do with the filter. Exactly right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because um, we'll all find that we don't know about everything because they come up with some new ideas so we have to keep, um, always keep on top of things um, because they change all the time. Next time the store might come out with a different air filter on it. So we sort of have to be... Are you still 65s, 64s have actually got a, a, foam, a, a foam skirt around the actual filter? Yeah, yeah. yeah. matter of fact, I think some of them might have even three, have they? They've got... In the inner and outer yeah. and, a, and another little uh, yeah, paper, component yeah. on it. There's, there's various different types, so yeah. For better or worse, I don't know, the cardboard, the, the one, some of the huskies have a cardboard one, just like often, you can't be in your car, like we've just been blowing it with air, with an air gun from the outside, you've got a tap and a bit of a, a blow, it yeah. seems to do the job, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. I've been reluctant to whack it with it. Should we post the choke first way until we don't drop shift out the cable? Should we post the choke so we don't drop shift out the cable? Now we'll get back to the um, completing the service. Um, now around our clutch and our brake setup. We we can um, take our take our little circuit clip off here if we don't lose it on the floor. That it's still in the roof. We can just pull this off. Some of these have got a little groove in them, so when you put them back on, you have to make sure that it just it, there's a little wire inside your clutch clutch setup. It's a bit hard to see, but there is a little wire down in here somewhere. For, for your oil, for your oil um, pump. So if that groove doesn't fit back on it, um, you'll find that your oil pump won't work. So, and you'll probably even have trouble putting your circuit clip and, and that back on. We've got a little roller bearing here. Very important on the steels that you wash that out thoroughly. Um, wash it out in straight petrol and grease it before you put it back on. So how, how often? Um, I, I do it mine weekly when I'm working my saw. Um, I'd probably say with the SES if they're only, if they if they're not doing 50, about, we'll say 50 hours. Yeah, if you don't 50 hours, we we'll say about 50 hours. So I would take that off, wash it out in petrol, and just make sure that it's still working. Just rolling rolling them around, mm -hmm. and um, mostly they don't cause much problem if you keep them lubricated, but get a little bit of grease and just roll it back into the... Can you grease? Um, I just use the ordinary grease, yeah. but, but still do put out one, but it's the same as what you'd buy for ordinary grease anyway, so... Mm. It's the same grease that you use for your, for your tippy out bar. Right. So... Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. So, um, we do that. Try to take off all the covers. Please remind me if I'm not putting something back on when I'm putting it back together. 
It's a bit hard to be talking and putting things back at the same time. That's your worry. We're in here yet. We know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's arrived. Those nylon guys. Can you turn around on that one? That thing um, no, they've got a just a set groove. Yeah. So we clean it, we pull it all down. The main thing is, is to, to make sure everything's nice and clean. Um, this band here, matter of fact, I think Gary's got one here somewhere um, that's um, lost its tension through um, probably, yes, probably even starting it with the brake on. Still recommends now that you don't start your chainsaw with the brake on because it puts too much stress on on your band and everything, and, and it doesn't do any good. So, um, the, and you must keep it all nice and clean in there. If you don't, it can wear. Then it's not doing any job. So we can see telltale signs. Peek around that ear. Yes. See that, and then with this side, we're looking at. It doesn't look too bad. Like it's. But you can pass it around, but when you get around to here, you can see there's a there's a bit in there. There's a fair chance if that had to be used, if the brake come on, hurry. Yeah. Pinch. It wouldn't, wouldn't come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it, it just wouldn't work. Up. So, so well, yeah, it wouldn't work. Yeah. But possibly from either um, starting it with the brake on or the habit of uh, finish the cut while the chain's still running, knocking yeah. the brake on with your hand yeah. to put it down on the ground, basically using the, the chain brake as a parking brake. As an end brake instead of uh, yeah, it's an emergency yeah. brake. Is that a good idea or a bad, bad idea? idea? Bad idea. Very bad idea. It's not a good idea to use a brake that's yeah, not right. necessary. Some, some people want to use a chain brake all the time, but yeah. It's, yeah. it's an emergency brake, it's not there as an end brake. Yeah. But there's a difference yeah. between, yeah. like you're saying, yeah. slamming on when it's actually coasting down to idle mm. and belting it on mm. when it's actually yeah. idling yeah. because your clutch is stopped anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you just wanted to let it idle there and it was stopped and you just want to put the brake on or if you're up a tree or something and you need to, if it if the motor if the chain stopped and you can put it on, yes. But um, you know, under load I, I wouldn't recommend it because that's what can happen. Yeah, exactly. so, I mean, a lot of people have got the habit of, of starting with the chain brake on and it was actually that one that Gary got. It came out of an SES chainsaw exactly. after Campbelltown. Yeah. One of yeah. our. Yeah. That came out of one of our saws. And it was so picked up. Town. It wasn't only Gary's saw. It, it came there. back. So a lot of them that went through from Campbelltown, we've even got one in ours that we had to replace the yeah. chain brake. Yeah. So, yeah. But that might have been well, actually run with the brake. Mm -hmm. So you, you get kicked back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Build up that thing. The chain brake hits will it still end it? Or just stop the chain? It's supposed to stop the chain. Yeah. That probably wouldn't stop the chain. No. If it Gary, did. what's the policy on starting the saw? Because previous training exercises it was if you start the saw with the chain brake on. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's no. what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, and, yeah well, still, well, I still recommends me or not to. But when I did my assessment, I didn't agree with you. Every time I put the saw yeah. down, I was supposed to have the handbrake other. Yeah. The handbrake on in case a kid or something touched the body. So it's back to chain brake as necessary. So yeah, well, um, that still was finding that they were having a lot of trouble with that type of, and they, um, the last time I was talking to the dealer, he told me that they've gone off of recommending starting it with that on because that was causing the problem. If the theory is that you've got to leave the chain brake on while it's idling, you might as well turn the thing on. 90% of the cases. We know, I just... Look at the uh, the dreaded book, which is what you're going to be assessed out of, and it exactly. says starting saw on the ground, apply the chain brake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Also, in the uh, in the assessment instrument, yeah. in the um, cross cutting section, there, one of the uh, necessary criteria is um, applying chain brake between cuts. When you're leaving, you should be walking yeah. along. Plop, plop. Oh, they're actually talking about their little scenario where you're, you're giving householder access and you're working as a team. There's one man cutting and then you've got others coming in clearing and he's supposed to do his cut, whack the chain yeah. back on as far as it yeah. goes in there as a guy. Yeah, yeah but I mean, that, that's fair, but you're not going to be slammed, you're not going to be putting the yeah. chain yeah. brake on under, under pressure. Yeah. 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 Wait, about, then just throw it on. What about if you're yeah. doing um, a, a clamp start and you're up a tree or something and you clamp between your knees? Okay, in the book. Yeah. Um, is that a situation where you might 
use the train break to start it or not? Well, well, I think it's very much the same. Yeah, yeah, well, probably if your motor is hot. You can only leave like you can only leave like if it's hot anyway. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if it, if it was hot and it was and you started. you just put it on just so it was idle, you probably wouldn't do as much damage. But if you started it cold with with right. your your throttle locked yeah. on, you you got a lot of pressure on it. So we take. You know, where if, if it was so just idling, it probably wouldn't hurt. Only when it comes back to tune, tune properly, it needs a throttle lock more than you. That's exactly yeah. right. And yeah. It should, start, should just start without it, so and with the brake on it probably wouldn't do any damage. And you shouldn't have There's a problem turning the rock in the street. That's exactly right. Before it goes up. Anyway. Yeah. I think if it's in the book and it says that we apply the chain brake, that's what we really have to teach. I mean, if we if we start saying, ah, uh, well, you know, it's good to do it sometime or, or what, you know, then you're going to get cha challenged. I mean, fair enough, parts wear and that we have to replace it. And yeah, but that part there, though, is a yeah. safety device, Richard, and yeah. we are teaching safety to the utmost. You wouldn't say yeah, if we don't change the time. If we keep that, 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 that we're right. relying on that chain break. Right. That's, what, that, that's what's going through my mind. Well, the store manufacturers don't recommend it. Things it's are changing bit, all the time. So the, book should, should, the book should change to the back of Because I think it's only been, it might have been last time we were down here um, that I brought it up about it. Um, it's it's only it. been in last two or two years. Yes. I think they but brought it in. Always been a boat that can We've got to be careful because if we start training, there's not, no chain break and something happens yeah. with yeah. In deep shit. Yeah, well, I think that that's so what are we saying? Do we yeah, continue yeah, using yeah. chain breaker for instructing somebody yeah, to charge? But, 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 so but, but I, I think, think if, if you're going to, I think the best thing is then probably is to to make them aware that. So there's two sides of this. Yeah, oh, just like be very cap careful boots. of it, mm. and as soon as it does, get it off the ridge as quick as possible. Don't don't put too much stress on it. And, yep. Well, there's you know, the thing: so the choke on, throttle full on, chain break on, start it. And, 15 second, 10 second, you full know, rev. quicker you can get it off the better. Exactly. You know, don't sort of put it under any load if you can get it, get out of it. Until, and probably until we can get it either altered in the book or... It only takes half a second to load. It probably won't yeah. ever get altered. It's like the steel cap boot issue. Yeah. It's it's always going to be a... Yeah. So it's another four year argument. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. in a grey area, but it, it comes with experience and, and then we... Yeah. Well, perhaps yeah. we we're just keep pushing and make people aware of high wear yeah. maintenance issues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think so that's probably not a bad idea. Flick it off yeah. the reds as soon as you start it, yeah. and yeah. and then um, but and don't jam the bloody brake on while the thing is running yeah. because it's completely unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. That's the trouble. How many of you seen? Mm. And it's been it it's wore one of them out, wore, wore the drum out, just through being nearly running all the time. It's, they've gone blue through just heat, so um, just through the whole lot of it not being clean. So by what we discovered that, you know, we can take it off and have a look and making sure that if the brake is working, um, it's not discoloured. So it's, a, it's a, good sign, a good idea to be able to pull all this apart and, and check it out then, okay? So I'll put this back together. Rattle gun. How tight do you want it? Oh shit, it's a little bit like you stay clean and we don't all we don't all the way just while we're on that completely off the chain break issue. Just before we completely off the chain break issue. That's five bucks. Hey Phil, that's the result of one starting with the chain brake, chain brake on, mm. uh, on higher revs, and the, and your rims broken. Is that yeah, right? It's yeah, come. Yeah. Yeah. Something's had to give. Uh, full revs, brakes on. Something's got to give. And that's what I'm saying. That's per ah. result thereof. Right? That's what I'm saying. We've got to keep breaking them. We've got some mounting evidence if they want some at the yeah. state, Richard, to um, put our case. Do you want to write the case and we'll get it changed? It's not worth our effort because nothing <laughs> changes, mate. I was going to say, yeah, if we don't, how long are we going to take it? Yeah, we we'll, just we'll win by just teaching more people out. No, it's, it's not our competency, it's forest industries. If we take it to commerce and pull stop to it, we're going to get the rest of it. So, Adam, what's forest, forest industry? What's forest industry, they're not 
within the RFS we are te or it is being taught this is through the RFS. This uh, is SES and we use yeah, the forest Yeah, no, no, industry but the forest tech. industry is the same that way and they do not teach the starting and they teach the using the chain break oh, no, sure once that. you've stopped but not started. That one was just starting to grab. So we can just pass those ones around and have a look. Um, should have been replaced. Um, and there's, there's another one that that's what they look like. That one's the very same as there's that one. Um, so when we pull it down, we can identify the crook sprocket and we can replace it. Um, we don't want the outcomes like that. Okay, so that's that's through um, not identifying but getting it got to that state, then um, they've let it get too far. Um, the same in the, in the rim sprocket, they've let it get too far. Um, you should be getting signs well before that. Chattering instead of running smooth. Yeah, I still, I still had a fair bit of life through dinner. Yeah. It's not a lot, but it did have a good run. Yes, but it came through the chain break. It's just a fair while, but um, it's a good thing. Like you're using the saw and this chain keeps getting loose or something. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So did you mention this? That you got a couple of different. Make the bottom shiny. As soon as it starts to make the bottom shiny, you know it's gone too far. The thing with them is they're fairly cheap and they're pretty easy to change yeah, over. Twelve dollars or something well, and you get replaced. Six or seven bucks, eight, nine bucks. Yeah, yeah. I think with the steels, we've got the, uh, we've got nine, we've got eight through, eight through four, there's four different rim sprockets that fit it. We've got the seven tooth, the nine tooth, so when yeah. you go in there, I just thought it should be quite there. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're better off taking your correct, the sprocket that comes off the saw and get the right one for it. So, um, Instead of just going and you say, I want one for a 29 you know, or whatever, yeah, you take take the correct one in. Because it has got the numbers on it, you can. They're on the back. Some of them have yeah. got the holes in the back eight, 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 seven. for chip clearance. Yeah, well, those yeah. others are all yeah. on that one there. Yeah, and when you do, you get a seven yeah. tooth yeah. sprocket yeah. on that saw, then you change it to an eight or nine. We, we can look at various components of your bar. Um, you can see this one's had a very <laughs> nice little life. Um, through maybe blunt chain, um, too much weight, um, lack of oil, um, maybe the oil holes haven't been cleaned out, um, the groove. So when we're putting it back together, we, we must make sure our grooves are clean, the oil holes are clean, um, look for any any defects, maybe the, the nose sprocket is worn out, loose, maybe need greasing, um, the rivets, um, and little birds. A lot of people think just because the saw is um, running crooked will sharpen the chain. Or a lot of times it is your bone. Um, having a little... Can, Barry, can you grab two of them? No, the other one. First, yeah. 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 Um, just hang on to the shell. Okay. So just by having a little burr on it, you can just feel that faint burr on there can cause that saw to run off. Mm. Um, we've got this other one here too. Ta -da! A <laughs> that you'll only go in probably about that far and see how it, it just won't let it go in any further. Because it's got the bird. Um, a lot of people, then you'll just turn your saw like that and it will cut. So um, even if it's the faintest bird, it can cause that because it's wider than what you change. So it's very, very important. Um, then, if your if your bar won't stand up like that, yeah, that one's not too bad. But, but um, some of them just um, won't stand up at all because it, it's it's worn worn along, along there, and that's what this bit of timber here will cause. If your saw's doing that, um, you'll have to dress your bar because you start to get a moon. The moon, it just keeps running off on you. So um, to do that, that's what this is for. What we do, 
um, you you put it on the grind. I won't. We won't start it up. But we'll just um, start from the, the point of it. Um, it's designed 90 degrees, so it's straight. It's got a fairly um, soft stone on it, and we just keep it nice and flat, and we just just run it through it. We'll do that two or three times, and you'll see the different colour in your bar. Not getting hot, just by the dull, dull and, and shiny spots where it's starting to dress up. So we try to get it so we've got it nice and level. Then I've got over here somewhere where I've got it here. I've got a little square that what you can do, you can do it two ways. You can either run your square along the top and see the difference in the gap, or if you sit it on on a bench and sit that up there. See how much it's still out? Mm. Okay, it's standing up, but it's still out and that can still cause your sword to run. So, you know, you, you'll dress it up, so basically it's like that. So you don't put a lot of pressure on on the grinder, it's just basically just running it through and it's just plain. Don't have your pan out, Fred. Write down all these little knickknacks we can buy. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> hey, Mick, Mick, I've got a text Also, they'll say that if you haven't got access to a grinder, you can just use yeah. at, a, at a square, at a file. Yeah, and a, a draw yeah, file, yeah, yeah, yeah. hover in there and just from standing on that side. Yeah. Right. But there I don't know about you'll get it. Got a bit of practice. Yeah, yeah, you can still get it. It's not bad, but it's still not quite as good as the, the grinder. Oh. But yeah, there's yeah, not too many units yeah. are going to have yeah. access to that. Side. But the yeah. idea is, if it's doing that, the field dressing, you yeah. can do this in the field and just yeah. bring it, touch it back up quickly. Yeah. If you're in the field, and start to do it. <laughs> stitch in time, save nine. And the main thing is to get the mushrooms off the side of it. Yeah, that, that is more of the problem also than, than the, the, the um, face of it. But um, Gary is right, you can, can get it out of trouble. Um, the main thing is knowing, if you can't fix it, knowing that it needs doing to be able to get it fixed. You know, not everyone's got a grinder and can make a grinder up to do it. But the main thing is, is knowing what the problem is. Um, a lot of times, if you haven't been rotating your bar and turning it over, you could probably just turn it over and it'll probably do the job for you. Because a lot of people don't. They think just because it's got writing on it, that's the way it should go. You sh should, every time you take your bar off, you should turn it over. So, so it runs fairly even. So, um, because a lot, you can ha strike a lot of problems. Um, there's one there. You can hand them around and have a look. It's got a, a mighty burr on that. Uh, this one here, can any of you tell me what, what that's called through? Shadow. I'll keep the glasses out. Got it. Pinched it. Where are you just going? The chain came off. That can happen through a, a loose chain. Loose chain. Yeah. I mean, it's it's flat. Yeah. Loose chain. Yep. Well, this effect here you can get from a loose chain. Yeah. Usually, from that's, usually that's your, yeah. your loose chain syndrome. There's a big hole in there and in there. Yeah. 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 Um, when we that, 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 so so the main thing is to have it tight. If it starts to get loose, it's too rough to okay. <laughs> No, the surface still the same behind it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. The, the solid core <laughs> and the, uh, oh, the laminated bars. Okay. Uh, as solid. opposed to and also your sprocket. Yeah. Yeah, well I haven't got any laminated ones or oh, um, Matter of fact, there's one on that one. Mm. Yeah, yeah um, I think there is solid bars and there's laminated bars. 
Um, see how the rivets are not in there, the laminated one? It's um, made of three pieces of metal all sandwiched together, riveted together, as opposed to these guys that are, yeah, that are solid. solid. That's yeah. one solid piece of metal that's machined out of it. So these are heavier duty than these guys, yeah. but I mean they're going to cost you more than yeah. those guys as well. Uh, and you can see that the, these have got a sprocket inset, whereas these the sprockets just <coughs> built, 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 yeah, built yeah, 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 put in there and then yeah, riveted together yeah, so you can replace right, the sprockets. Warning out that yeah, trying to strap them over if you've maintained it correctly. But um, these and with the bars too, a lot of people with their oiling um, expect it to be flying out the end. Um, with the with the roller tips and that on the sprocket noses. They, they feed back down and just back the onto the bottom it. instead of sort of throwing it off the end. Just because it's, there's no oil coming out of the end, it's not necessary that it's um, not oily. If you're uncertain about it oiling, best thing is to start your chainsaw up before you put your bar on and check your oil hole under revs and if there's no oil coming out of there, your oil pump's not working. Um, and, and then you, if, it, if it is oiling there, Check all your bar and make sure it's nice and clean and everything. Otherwise, it could be an oil hole in there. Because um, they're designed now not to throw the oil out. Plus, in Europe, you're not a, the bars are designed that if you throw any out, no one let. Yeah, yeah. So. The oils are designed to bling up like. Yeah, the sticky oils and that. Yeah. Can you just uh, tell us about the tip, the sprocket maintenance, grease, oil. Any particular yeah, thing yeah um, it's grease. Oh, I have. Yeah, I think thank the drive links are shaped in that way that the oil dispersed in. Mm. So it's pretty important to keep the groove clean. Yeah, That's the other thing. It's pretty important yeah. to keep that yeah. groove clean because yeah. if it's not clean, the oil yeah. it's keeping throwing the oil back down. It's got to run along. Um, yeah, we we have got a grease gun for the for the nose. Some haven't even got any. Um, some do get a lubricated enough just through the oil coming down through it, but grease, not oil. Make sure your oil hole's cleaned out. Um, they, that, these are only about eight dollars. These little ones are not very dear. And just one or two pumps, and you see you got the grease coming straight out. So you know, then you've got the other side. You do the same to it. Um, yeah. The grease only stay in there for a certain period of time because the hot oil disperses together. Yeah, yeah. So it does pay to sort of mm -hmm. keep it fairly lubricated, fairly well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, now we'll get to the chain. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yep. Thanks. Thanks now, so that sounds pretty good to me. We're getting our photos uh, taken to the local paper, which is <laughs> extremely okay. exciting. So we'll have lunch, then we'll come back and we'll cover um, various chains. I've got some samples here of Oregon and, and Steel, so we'll, we'll discuss them and some some um, sharpening and that. So. Um, We'll have lunch and we'll get back into it. What's one o'clock, is it? Uh, 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 half past yeah, one o'clock. We'll okay. get back into it. Uh, we want more than half to have lunch. No, yeah, yeah. You're going to the bar. I'll go to the bar. Great, but um, there's a lot of people that are not aware of it. When did you have that out last month? Get About on. six months ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they had call out for a picture trucker. Oh, okay. That's the official version and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Right. And do stuff this afternoon, but this is all evidence for when we dive food poisoning, is it? Oh, is it? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Well, it's done here, but you reckon you just have to eat that one. Two that looks healthy, love.
Thank you. Or anywhere. <laughs> they learnt to keep well away from me on stage. <laughs> then one night, <laughs> the little bugger, he uh, crept up behind me just as I yelled. <laughs> yes, Dad? Not nearly right, jumped. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, we'll get back into it. I've just put this bar back on very quick. Um, hey! We can whistle again, guys. This <laughs> might get in trouble. Okay, as we're putting it back on, we make sure our chain. Will we leave it like that? No. No way. Okay. Um, how much would we. Oh, it would go looser, do we? Okay. How far up would we tighten it? Can anyone tell me? Uh, uh, contact and then half a turn. Um, contact probably hits the bottom. Contact and probably just a little bit extra won't hurt it. What I like to do then is just, I um, should have a pair of gloves on, but. Blunt chain. Blunt chain, yes. When, when we're teaching it, we should should have. Blunt chain, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to sharpen it, so we'll be like What we can do now, if you can move it with two fingers, it's not a bad sign. If you have to, like that, she's definitely too tight. So that, that's running fairly smooth, so that's not a bad sign. We have. We've still got a little bit of there. If it was um, hanging down like that, or if you couldn't move it, it's too tight. Okay? Well, it depends on the same with idling. You have to get kind of stop. Oh, uh, it's not necessary. It could be tuning too. So that, no, that could be a little bit of a different... Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Exactly right. Yeah. You have to do that, do you? Yeah, hold the tension of the bar. And tighten um, the back. And then, then you tighten it. So I was basically holding the weight of the saw. Mm -hmm. You can do it. You can do it various ways. You can push down on them. You can whatever you like. The main thing is, as long as you've got pressure on the bar, so it holds it up when you tighten it. Tighten the block vice. Mm -hmm. yeah? Tighten it. You just tighten the block vice on it and let it let it sit on there. Oh, right. yeah. And um, that's doing it in the front. Yeah. And, and tighten the rear nut first, because that's the one that's going to. Take, take more, more yeah, right. Yeah, right. Mm. So you, if you tighten that one, then yeah. that's the one closer to where it's yeah. going to fit you around. Yeah. So yeah. it stays. That one here where you check the spike spot and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, like I was saying about the um, sprocket. So when you've got it on there, if it's running fairly smooth, if it's going like that, you've got a pretty good idea that the sprocket's starting to um, wear and grab. Um, um, There's some ideas after you've, after you've done that, you just let them run for a couple of minutes and then take them out of their worst. Because they will, yes, like, you probably went out there now and started that saw up, that will probably loosen off. So, you know, does it, just to warm your saw up, then just maybe check it before you go and work, it, it, it's a good room, yeah. So um, get new chains that will be mm. stretched as well, right? Yeah, um, yeah I was just stretch. about to... That's a stretch, yeah. yeah. <coughs> about to get new chains, like, if you don't mind. Um, I've got... got some... <laughs> 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 Sit down in the back! <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I've got some samples here. Um, I've got Oregon, Oregon and Steel. Um, there's some various different types. Here I've got the Vanguard chain. Most of you are aware of the Vanguard chain with the, the rakers. Um, okay. I've got a, a chain here that's sharpened with a, with a flat file. Um, Just the Vanguard there. You've got the Vanguard chain there. 
the other Vanguard chain? No. Okay, is that okay? You've got your first generation safety chain and your second, there's your first generation safety chain. Yeah. Okay. Has the ramps on the top. With the ramps there, you've got the ramp there and you've got your raker. Because the old standard raker used to look like that before the first generation safety chain. Um, then you've got your second generation safety chain there. With the no ramp, just with the rounded ramp. So when we're sharpening that and, and you're cutting your raker down, you must round it off, not just have a flat top on it. So you try to keep it in the same shape as that. So when you take your raker down, you must keep that. Um, just the, other, Otherwise, there's only just the various sizes. Um, that one, I'm trying to find it there with the square. That one there, you can have a look at and have a look around. That's been sharpened with a the square file, with a file like that. Ooh. So why would you do that? That that is, the re it's done like that. They reckon they used to cut pretty good, but I've never tried them. I, I don't know much about them. <coughs> Races have um, sharpened them with a the square file too, yeah. with a hot saw. They use that racing. square file for cutting through the bark. The okay. So when you cut it through with the round file chains that bark rises and the square file chain cuts it off like flush. Okay, yeah. So more when you're ripping. And you don't get any mm -hmm. tie on the on the bar. It gives that chain a bit more room to work. So you can just have a look around, have a look at them and um, I'll pass them around. Yeah. Mm. Um, these are the steel chains. Um, just your, your standard um, chipper and, and your chisel chain. Um, basically the same as the, um, the Oregon chains. The only difference with these, they've got a, a groove in there for, to, to feed your um, links. So when it's run along the bar, all your steel chains have got that so it feeds, feeds the oil into the links of your chain where the Oregon ones haven't. Um, you might notice that the steel chains have got a little bit less flop in them than the Oregon chains too. If you sort of get hold of it and like that, a little bit more wear in them from the original time. And um, so there's just a few changes you can have a look at and those steel chains there. Um, now, still on the on the new chains, we should um, run a chain in by soaking it in oil when you get a brand new chain. It's a good idea to get some chain oil and sit it in a tin of oil and let it soak in it because it's not so much the stretching, it's the wearing of the links. So if we can get the oil on that in and around the links, um, then when you go to sharpen it, take it off, put another chain on it and just um, throw it in. Do that two or three times and you'll find that you'll get a better wear out of your chain than what you would just by just putting a new chain straight on. So one thing, soak them in oil, don't wash them, some people have the habit of washing them in petrol. Yeah. Uh, and that's just taking the oil clean out. And, use, so, cha and so use your chain oil, don't use your... To clean them up before you, you, you sharpen them, just put them through a bit of dead, you know, yeah, dry, dry hard timber, yeah. bit of hard dry timber, and that'll shine them up rather than people pour a white brush or something. So a lot of people mucking around with that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. But don't wash them in petrol because you just knock the oil yeah, clean back out. If you're first starting up a brand new one, you've soaked it and that sort of thing, just run it light for a while, just run it around the bar. If you do wash it in petrol, then you just put it in oil again. No, no, don't put it in, in petrol. Keep the petrol right away from the chain. Don't want petrol residue in there. You don't want petrol anywhere near it if you can tell. That's just not helping you. You wash your bar with the petrol, clean it up if you want to, like get the. Yeah, it's in the in the vehicle. Just so I'm asking people. It is in the vehicle. And and here's a few chains that I've got before we get into the sharpening. That we what uh, this one here is done quite good. It hasn't got much left. <laughs> um, the person has started to sharpen it back the other way. You notice that they're starting to slope back in the gallop. And you all see, see how they, they're sloping back 
this is the, the gullet here, as no one knows. You've got the gullet in there. They're starting to use the wrong size file. What's happening, they, they've come along and they've, because your tooth, if you kept going with the same file, your tooth would have started to lay back. So what they've done, they've come back down to keep, keep a little bit of a, 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 um, hooking on, on the chain and you've started to cut back into the link. And you might notice that once you start looking at this one, they, they're starting to cut right into your link of your chain. So, so using, <coughs> using a smaller file? Uh, using two bigger files. Oh, two bigger ones. Yeah. Because then you've come back down trying to still keep the hook in it. Um, I don't know if people are aware, but um, now for the 3A chain you use a, a 1364 file, not a 732. Um, one time you used to go from a 732 back to 316th, I think it is, yeah. um, mm -hmm. to keep the hook. A lot of people used to just use a 732 and that's, the re that's what happens. They get halfway back and to keep keep a little bit of hook on your chain, they keep going deeper and deeper and um, end up cutting into the link. If you wanted to use that much of your cutter, you'd have to drop down to a 532 anyway to run a 3-hour chain to keep it, keep it with a nice um, cutter yeah. on it. Well, you can mostly get it with the um, 1364. You can go all the way, yeah. These little numbers 1364. are the amount of teeth on the chain, are they? No, no they just make of the chain. Yeah. Yeah, they just the, the numbers on it are just um, yeah. various ones to suit. Like Kim's got to see this book here. Yeah, yeah. That's the best Match way to explain it. it. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they all mean something, and, and you'll every find. Chain, if you have a look at every chain you've got in your hand there, I mean, yeah, you'll you find that one. Yeah. every one of them has got a different number. And that'll all be in. Why did you put the number on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends on who made it and what they made it. Yeah, steel's got different numbers to. There's little numbers sometimes on the depth gauge, and there's another little number on the dry tooth, and they mean different things. Sometimes so, we've got this chain here, they've been sharpening it and they haven't been cleaned the gullet out. See how the gullet's still got a bit of metal in it, then they've done something similar. They've come back down into the link. Um, you just can just keep handing them around. Um, it's a 73 on that, it's actually a yeah, I don't want to hand that around yet, so just let it be close. So I'll talk about it. No, it's not the one you're looking at. No, it's not. Put out another individual menu. Oh, that's it. This one here is not sharp and too bad. It's um, probably not, not the best, but it's, it's not bad. But this has got a fault in it. So when you're putting it back on the saw, it does pay to walk around and have a look at it. it so um, I'll, let, I'll let you pick out where the fault is. What, what's happened is um, it's broken the tooth off and um, it's got a split in the link. So um, it's a good thing to sort of have a look. I should be able to find it there somewhere, Richard. Um, and when we go to sharpen, a lot of people, when we're getting back to this saw running, um, what they do sometimes, and it doesn't ha happen very often, but if you hit something just on one side of the saw, mostly you hit it on the top. You don't happen very often to hit all down one side and not on the top. But it can make it run by doing that. I've got a chain here that's just been hit on all the teeth on one side. So if you look at it all down along that side there, all the nickel's been taken off it. So if you're sharpening that, well, the chain's just about buggered so you throw it away. But if you had a new chain and you're wondering why it was running crooked and you've sharpened it real good, to have a look at the back of it, you could discover that you've just hit it on one side because it's gone all dull. See what I'm, see how it's all dull going in there on one side? But the top of it's quite not bad. It's not real good, but it's not bad. But it's so, and the other side's pretty good. Yeah, so you know you can get caught. On, yeah, and just pass it around, please. Yeah, we've got one here that I recommend that you don't do. Grab a new chain and knock the rakers off. 
So here they hit it with angle grinder and just cut them off. I don't recommend that because um, for a start we got a lot of kickback. And um, a lot of people don't realise that when you do that, yes, well, it won't, it won't count because um, it's not. It won't help you. It won't help you. Can't no. That will just all it's doing in is it's putting an extra load on the saw and yourself well, and everyone else. It just doesn't break. It doesn't help you. Even the racing guys won't. So it's been done by complete idiots. Best wish. So there's a chain that we can. Where did you get that one from, mate? Hey, did that actually come in on a saw? Yeah. They're, they're not called breakers, by the way, they're definitely just... Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I did correct you, Gary. We were in the background, so yeah. Because they, they, they're not breakers, yeah, 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 yeah. apply to things like the old yeah. um, cross cuts, like I said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Some were used about four years ago, weren't they? <laughs> Our Coomera is still a bit safer than they use. Yeah, well, we want our kerosene when we're in there. Mate, I'm going to make it from candles at one last year. You've got kerosene when you're right. It's all the way over. And another thing, it's very important to um, make sure that your teeth are both either side you saw are all the same length. Um, it doesn't do the wear of the chain or the cutting or anything any good. Plus, if you're trying to take your... Um, if they're all different heights when you put the depth gauge on it, um, you get a different reading. So, you know, you can't um, get a true reading with them. They all have to be even. There's a... I'll put it somewhere. Shift it. One or even, always one side longer than the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one can hold the sides there. Yeah. Unless you can fold them both in. What we can do, if you haven't. If, if you want to, you can use a shifter when you're sharpening it. You can use a shifter and just get each tooth the right length. If you've got nothing else, the little shifter, most people have got one in the one boot dollar, of the car or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, if you haven't, you've mostly got a shifter. Very accurate. Uh, yeah. um, or you can use the the G. It's got a this steel one. It's got a stopper on it. So when you um, when you find your worst tooth, you locate your your tooth on your saw, file it back to where you're happy, screw that out the suit by holding the file in against the tooth, and every tooth's the right length. Um, Gary, you have to be changing it. Thank you. 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 Thank you sharpen it all the way down in here. These are the main areas up here. There's your file. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> the main areas are here. This is where it cuts, and the point, and, and this part here, more so than down in here. So, because if you've um, ever seen a chisel or something and you're pushing along, that's how your chip basically comes out of your, your saw. And, and keep your gullet nice and clean so it's sort of a big smooth. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's cutting back way up, remember, it's coming along yeah. underneath, it's cutting, and, and it's cutting from there to there, that's what's cutting the yeah. the, uh, the scarf of the wood out, and all the depth gauge is doing is limiting the amount of wood that's feeding into that, if it's, you know, there's the longer it's coming into, and the amount of wood that you're taking off is going to be you know, regulated by how far that is, that's pretty important that that's yeah. spot on, anyone using that vanguard, that you've sort of got to really <coughs> keep on that because it's got to, it shapes across. But uh, yeah, it's cutting from there to there, and that's the that's mm -hmm. the important thing you've got to got to remember. So it's that angle in there, that that angle there is the part that's that's going it's to be doing, doing, doing all the work. cutting. That's yeah. what's doing yeah. the cutting. And if that's not right, and the only way you get that right is with the right size yeah. file set up the right yeah. way. By by using these. Um, you have to be so careful because each one of these you have to use the correct file in them. So you can't just say, oh well, I've got a guide, 
I'll put a 732. You must use the correct guide for the right file. <coughs> and it's aiming to get, if you can help me out, is it one third or one fifth above the, one fifth, the file? One fifth of the file. Yeah, yeah. If there's a round, if we had that thing out here, it looks like it. Almost looks like a file. <laughs> if that's going through there, the idea is that only one fifth of that file should be up. Is going to be above above, the, above there, and that's going to give you the perfect shape because it's, it's this part here. It's going to give you the the right shape for the. Uh, the if he, to follow what Gary's saying, there, if you're in doubt, that's the best way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it with an empty file. Just yeah. a file. The, these. And that's being set up to put one yeah, fifth of the, the file, yeah. providing we're using the right file well, for the right, the right sort use, of. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, most any size file, eh? No. Yeah. no. The, any file you can poke into there, but it's not going to but, necessarily set it up uh, right. That's the wrong size file. Yeah. You put a little baby file in there, yeah. it's going to put it up oh, halfway. Yeah. 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 So yeah. here's two here. I've got one here as a 316. So you get the right depth gauge for the right file. The right file for the right... The file guide for the guide. Guide, yeah. The guide's got to match your file. Yeah, mm. and that one there is 1360. Where are you, Fred? I've got two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Mm. These jigs are very good because one thing about them, when you're sharpening, once you do set them up, they do take a little bit of setting up, like Gary then said. It's a bit hard to get your depth once you learn and, and know that the height of your tooth and where your file's going, where it doesn't even hurt to use one of them first, give it one, one little hit with the fire guide. And then once you do it one hit with a fire guide, you've got a rough idea on what height to set this. So if you've got any doubts whatsoever, you can do it, do it with the fire guide first, then set that up and you can get them spot on if you, if you didn't know. What you're saying about that depth gauge, so as you're going back, like that, all different lengths, as you're going back here, this is getting, the depth from there is getting shallow, so therefore this has to go down. If you've got teeth that are this long, teeth that are this long, they're all going to be different lengths and they're going to work too good. So uh, the idea is to try and keep them roughly the same. So, so we've got one of these, and these are not a bad little... <laughs> one of these, are, you just set it on top of your tooth and you can just, just file and say, well, look, they don't need taking down. So they're about, and once you've finished filing it, you you file it, just take the top off it by just tipping that over there and you can just take the, just round it off. Um, you file from one side then the other because you, one will go one way, then if you go the opposite, it's here it's a different, different sound, so you go in the opposite, so it's the same like filing your teeth, one on one side, then you turn around and do the other, so your rakers are no different. Depth gauges. <coughs> no, depth gauges, sorry. What about the fallout for you? Leave it in the boot of your car. Uh, not necessarily so. Yeah. <laughs> not necessarily so. If you don't know anything about them, Gary, they're the same as the electric ones, they burn the top of the bar. If you, if you know what you're doing with it, uh, I mean, I don't use one. Yeah. Oh, I don't use one. But what you're talking about is getting a, a finish on here. Yeah. Yeah, that's your cutting surface. And, if, and you can use. If, if you can, if you use one, well, it's just, you just got to keep using it. They're too expensive to use. You keep yeah. wiring up the little gadgets, yeah. but yeah. The little they will do. So they burn uh, them. Uh, they shouldn't burn them. Well, if I've you, seen a lot of people burn them with them. I've seen a lot of people stuff them up with files too. But, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I personally don't use one. But if you really want to get a good finish, they recommend if you, if you yeah. after you file it and you can go along and just touch them up with that, you'll put that mirror finish on. That's what you're after. Yeah. Is yeah, that, nice. that perfect cut? Well, well, I always that those grinding machines make the teeth harder. Yeah, yeah. then you can't file it. You have to continue. Yeah, you that's can't. That's why you have to be so careful. Anything with a stone, you have to be so careful. I went to Bungendore one about brother, two years ago with an Oregon bloke there with his chain and he reckoned when you get a new chain from the shop, if you did it with a file anyway, that puts the best, you best finish on it. Yeah, you will. Better yeah. than what the grind and the yeah. You also get the best cut when they're so, worn about halfway down. Yeah, yeah. Because so, at the moment you're trying to cut with that much timber, if you're back to here, you're only cutting, yeah. I mean, with that much... When you're back there, you're cutting with that much, so all the power of your saw is, is cutting less. Right. When you get too far, it's actually then starting to bind on the side and you're not cutting the They're for your angle. You know, yeah. So if you want to set it up for your, your 35 or whatever, if you set it up, you're using a, yeah, if you're just using a freehand saw. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I always use and, and plus, for your, you've got marks on the side for your... Yeah, marks. Your, um, 
See how you've got your uh, curve in your weed yeah. file is? If you put them on the side, it tells you if you're too much or not enough. Oh, okay. okay. It's just the one I got. It's just the system. Okay. okay, we might get into maintenance on that. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can get back to your dog's box. You're the only other one that can answer this, this one. This is something that I thought was wrong with. Brand new chain. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, well done. Uh, did we use the right size file for the right size? 3-8, 3-8, yeah. Well, we did really good. Okay, now, people, who here doesn't have a Bluetooth device? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
So we don't want that to happen this time. So we're just making sure if you're confident in your saws and you think that they are no burrs on them and safe and everything else. But if you want to, so if you're ready to practice and towards being assessed in level two, you need to go in Kim's group. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just, nice just stand behind Glenn. You can have. So now, if you can do that now, like, to split up amongst who, which group you're supposed to be in, we'll get the show on the road. Group two. Group two. Yeah. Yeah. Group two is there. You, mate. You're our driver. Yep. You're over here. Cool. <laughs> Group 2 is getting really popular already, I can tell. Oh, yeah. right. We're now the tree fellas. All right, now, didn't we have <laughs> more than you? Up to what you Let this be a reminder to you all that this organization will not tolerate failure. Oops! I did it again, baby. Yeah! What led you through the hopelessly tangled underbrush of private security organizations to our door, hmm? Stellar word of mouth? Our fine client roster? Those flyers we put up in that public urinal?